Thank you very much. So thank you very much and good afternoon. So here we are six years after the NFE white paper. And we've definitely had made some progress in terms of an architecture and code bases. But we have to admit that we have very serious problems. That the rate of adoption and the rate of innovation is much slower than anybody would have thought six years ago. And this poses a paradox, which is, why has this been so hard? This is a paradox because NFE involves three basic components. There's an infrastructure manager that oversees the computational infrastructure. There are VNFs that are largely based on existing implementations. So we know how to do these things. These aren't new. Then there's a third piece, which is the NFE manager, which oversees life cycles for both VNFs and service chains. This is new. It's not a trivial problem, but it's not a six-year hard problem. So what has been so hard for us? And the answer is integration is the hard problem. These individual components, these three components, by themselves are not that hard, but we've connected these components in complicated ways. And we've made two fundamental errors. First, we embedded NFE management in the compute infrastructure. And second, we made it so that new features often require changes in the pairwise APIs. So this set of decisions makes deployment hard because you have to change your infrastructure. It makes onboarding even harder because how can you build a VNF that integrates smoothly into such an infrastructure? And it makes innovation almost impossible because these three components are now so tightly woven together that it's hard to innovate. So how do we fix this? So the answer is to look first at integration, solve that problem first before we worry about the components. And to solve integration, we do it in three steps. First, as we will describe later, we provide a universal integration mechanism, which is a key value store. The second is we do not require NFE-specific features in the VIM. And the third and the most important step is we knew when to stop. That's all we need to do. If we do these three things, we leave the rest of the design open for innovation. The components can evolve independently. Deployment barriers are greatly reduced. And this creates a lean that is no additional and unnecessary complication and extensible. You can add new features without breaking anything. And multi-vendor, if you have solved the integration problem, then your components can come from different vendors. So I'm not going to tell you how this actually works in practice. I'm going to leave this for my colleague, Sylvia Ratnasamy. Thanks, Scott. So I'm going to pick up exactly where Scott left off. So Scott talked about we have three basic components. And he pointed at integration, and in particular, simplifying integration as the pro problem we should focus on. So I'm going to take my time to talk a little bit about the proposal at a pretty high level, what our proposal is for how we do this simplification. And to get straight to the point, what we're proposing is add one component to this picture. And that's a key value store. And that key value store is going to act as our single universal point of integration for all components. So before I go ahead, let me just a quick refresher. A key value store is exactly what it sounds like. It's a data store that stores keys with their associated values. And you have APIs to add keys, to look up keys, to watch for changes to keys. There are many open source implementations of these key value systems. They've been widely deployed over the years in production. Perhaps the best known, the most famous, is a system called etcd, which is the key value store that's used in Kubernetes, deployed at Google, Salesforce, et cetera. And so with that, the natural question, why a key value store? And the reason is because you know, if you cut through all of the APIs, message syntax, protocols, and so on, the essence of integration is really allowing different components to discover and to exchange state. And so in our context, it's state like, what is the configuration of the VNF? What resources are available at a node? What is the load on the vSwitch on server number 15? And so on. A key value store allows us to do this discovery and exchange. But importantly, it allows us to do it in a manner that's lean and extensible. 
It's one single mechanism that we're going to reuse for all components and for all state. And because the key value store is agnostic to the particular keys and values and components, you can change those over time. And perhaps more Im importantly, it's lean in the sense that the only thing it specifies is where you go to discover state. Everything else in the system is open to innovation. So a component that's generating or reading state, it can be a VM, it can be a container, it can be in your VIM, it can come from vendor A or vendor B. The integration doesn't care. And hence, everything else that integrates doesn't care. And that's our proposal really in a nutshell. The remaining slides I have are really just expanding on how this integration would work. So let me go there. Let me start with the NFV manager. In general, in the NFV community, when we talk about Mano, we put up these two big boxes, NFV orchestrator and VNF manager. And this is where you come to do integration. What we're proposing instead is let's go a step further and decompose those boxes based on the concrete functionality that's needed for management. Things like placement, launching, configuration, auto-scaling, monitoring, and so on. Let's implement these functions as independent entities. We call them microcontrollers. And here, crucially, let's have each microcontroller integrate only with the key value store, independent of all the other microcontrollers. You can then start composing automation and management by composing these functions through the key value store. So here's a very simple example. Let's say I have the monitoring microcontroller that's recording in the key value store what the load is on a VNF. Your scaling microcontroller is reading that value and deciding accordingly how many instances of each VNF are needed. Your launching microcontroller, in turn, is looking at that value and maybe launching or tearing down VMs. Right? And this is just one simple example. You can imagine extending exactly this pattern to have far more sophisticated control loops. And notice I haven't said anything about where you implement any one of these microcontrollers. It could be in your VIM, could be in your SDN controller, could be a standalone microservice. All of that works because it doesn't change how you're doing integration. And so in a nutshell, doing this kind of key value-based integration, it makes NFV Mano lean. So let's say you have a UCPE. You don't need probably half of these functions for UCP device orchestration. So you could have a very lightweight orchestrator with the same architecture. It's extensible. Let's say that you have specialized hardware in your data center that needs to be taken into account when you do scheduling. You can go in and change, write your own placement microcontroller. The rest of your system stays completely unchanged. And perhaps most importantly, it's multi-vendor. Each of these microcontrollers could come from a different vendor. You could have a marketplace of microcontroller functions. We talk a lot about avoiding lock-in on the VNF side. It's equally important that we avoid lock-in on the management side. And this gets us there. So uh, let me move on now to integration with the VNFs. The challenge we see with VNFs, the biggest challenge I would say, is bridging the gap between where we would like to go as a community in terms of what VNFs should look like We've discussed this at length. They should be disaggregated, stateless, free of an EMS, cloud-native, containerized microservices, so on. Those are all great. But the reality of what VNFs in production look like today are by and large still VMs that are managed by the vendor's EMS. And so what we need is really, most importantly, a path to incrementally transition from what we have today to where we'd like to go. And again, a key value store gets us there. So let me start with a very simple VNF. It's a VM. It's managed by the vendor's EMS. Very simple change we could make is have the EMS discover what VMs it should manage from the key value store. This very simple change opens the door to microcontrollers coming in and doing things like auto-scaling, healing, placement, and so on. Once it knows what VMs it has to manage, we can just have the EMS talk to the VNF the way it always has. Let's go a step further. The VNF could actually read the configuration from the key value store. The minute it does this, it doesn't really matter so much whether the configuration comes from the EMS or whether it comes from a different microcontroller. And so if it's the right thing to do, you can gradually phase out the EMS for that VM and move to a world where these general nano solutions are managing all VNFs. You could likewise at the same time, be supporting VNFs that are these highly disaggregated components from different vendors that, again, are coordinating through the key value store in the same way. 
And the point is that you don't have to pick and choose. You can have all of these. Vendors can choose to put in the resources to evolve as the market proves itself. And all of this can coexist. And so take away here again, key value-based integration allows vendors to evolve in a way that's incremental and independent of each other. So the final component and point of integration is the infrastructure manager, or the VIM. Again, in this community, there's been a lot of discussion over the years around specializing the VIM for NFV, adding extensions to OpenStack, new plugins to SDN controllers, and so on. The challenge we see with this is, one, it's slow, because VIM code bases are inherently large and complex, so it's hard to move them. But the second is it leads to a new form of lock-in, or what I'm going to call infrastructure lock-in where you as a carrier, you've deployed your NFE solution, it's based on OpenStack, and now you think, I would like to move to VMware, or Nutanix, or Kubernetes, it really doesn't matter, and you cannot, because your OpenStack solution had the NFE solution built into it. If you take out OpenStack, you're gonna break your NFE solution. And so that's the situation we want to avoid. Our recommendation here is do not specialize the VIM, do not rely on a specialized VIM. Any NFV-specific logic should be up in the NFV manager and make use of common APIs that are common across all VIMs. So here's one example, is that you could go into your infrastructure manager, whether it's OpenStack or something else, and say, give me a set of nodes, maybe bare metal, on which I'm gonna run NFV. Go to your SDN controller and say, connect those nodes. And that's all you need to ask them for. Everything from that point on can run on this set of subset of nodes. So effectively, what we've done at this point is made NFV look like just any other workload that's running in your data center, alongside maybe your AI apps, TensorFlow, your Spark, Spark Analytics jobs. They all look the same from the point of view of the infrastructure. The key once you've done this is one of your other apps could be a different NFV workload that's based on a different implementation, a different architecture. And that is the surest path to enabling innovation and avoiding lock-in. The point at which you can run parallel NFV services with completely different architectures and implementations, you don't have to worry about being locked into one. And so the punchline here, again, is that key value-based integration approach is feasible with existing VIM layers, it does not require specialization, and doing so allows you to treat NFV as just any other workload. And with that, let me hand off to Constantine. Hi everybody, I'm Konstantin Polikonopoulos with uh, VMware and I'm going to take it uh, from here for all the five minutes that I have and by the way I just uh, logged a complaint with uh, the Linux Foundation because my friend uh, Arpit uh, refused to twist his tongue and pronounce my last name. Uh, <laughs> um, so, you know, there is a lot to be said about Lean NFV and how it addresses some of the key challenges we face today, and both Scott and Sylvia um, elaborate on, on those, uh, primarily uh, the complexity around onboarding uh, VNFs in existing NFV environments. But I want to, um, and so the argument goes for, uh, you know, previous generations networks, LTE, 4G, et cetera, I want to stay for um, a minute on 5G. It's not here yet, at least not in a pure end-to-end -end 5G uh, implementation. We have, of course, uh, the early days of uh, the so-called non-standalone 5G, which rides on top of um, LTE core. But if we really consider the reference architecture of 5G, we have a couple of fundamental design principles. One of them is service-based architecture. Right? Think about subscribe, notify. And how that fits perfectly with the Lean NFV design principles. How about CAPS? Control and user plane separation. And the separation of VNF, where the value is for the operator, and where innovation really happens for the vendor, from the management component, which in a big part is there to <laughs> assure integration and interoperability, right? There is a lot to be said also about the natural fit between cloud native uh, and continuous integration environments uh, in 5G, 
another aspiration of 5G with the design principles of uh, Lean NFE. Um, specifically, when we talk about 5G, the mind goes to highly distributed network infrastructure, right? All the operators, everybody here knows about Cord and Mac, etc. And operators have this immense uh, install base of, um, you know, appliance primarily, appliance-based gear in the central offices. Uh, the promise of uh, integrated access and providing essentially the same services regardless of the access, whether it's wireless 5G or optical or broadband, etc. So leveraging that footprint that already exists to push the cloud very close to where it's consumed, right? A great goal. Um, and how, again, a linear fee can facilitate and accelerate that transition because you have now uh, the opportunity to build all, all sorts of cool applications around the KV store, right? And I started thinking about this when uh, Scott, you know, first called me with Sylvia and said, you know, let's brainstorm about this. And I thought, this is a cool idea, right? Uh, because you can build all sorts of value-add capabilities in a KV store, uh, things like, I started thinking about continuations and how I can use a callback mechanism to totally decouple synchronization of the, you know, ordering of applications and VNFs. I can request the value. If the value is not, is not there, I will invoke the VNF that is supposed to produce a value um, or the set of values, and I don't have to worry about you know, fine-tuning interoperability between my VNFs. Greatly, again, uh, simplifying onboarding and allowing the, you know, the vendors to focus on innovation where really innovation matters to the operator and to the rest of the, com of the community. Um, another very attractive aspect of Lean RFE is that an NKV uh, store is that it renders itself beautifully to highly distributed infrastructure, where I can have basically a caching mechanism that would allow all of my um, exchange information to be localized and therefore create the notion of autonomously operating cloudlets in Mac environment, right? Only the information that needs to be propagated up the hierarchy will be relevant to a centralized, you know, controller or orchestrator, etc. So again, decoupling management orchestration from the value of the VNF and enabling through the KV, a distributed KV store, to seamlessly migrate workloads where the use is without having to uh, resort to complex orchestration um, solutions is, a, is, is another uh, benefit that addresses key design requirements of 5G. Um, one of my favorites is network slicing. And again, you know, there is a lot of work to be done. Nobody claims that we have solved all the problems, right? Um, what we are presenting today is a concept that has strong technical merits, and it will involve uh, and require uh, heavy participation from the community. But one of the ideas here, as you know, uh, the notion of network uh, you know, slicing is, again, fundamental requirement of 5G, where the three you know, key pillars of 5G include very disparate use cases, like enhanced mobile broadband and uh, massive machine-type communications, or ultra-reliable, uh, high reliability and low latency communications. Very different use cases. How do you implement all three of them uh, that are so different onto the same infrastructure? Right? Well, network, sli network slicing comes to the rescue. But network slicing requires, of course, uh, having multiple overlays on the same physical infrastructure. Imagine a case where I can have enhanced segmentation of the data to each slice through a KV store, right? Particip you know, security is one requirement, of course, but segmentation and actual uh, uh, locality of the data to each slice, which may be operated by a different operator, different entity, uh, is, makes the, the, the you know, security and privacy around network slicing even more um, 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 
important and a great solution. So with that, let me uh, address the last point here, which is, okay, we, re we recognize that there, are, there is a significant install base of NFE. Question is NFEI. How does Lean NFE fit into this? The answer is we believe that um, it can uh, coexist in a number of ways in a, in a transitional uh, hybrid environment where a KV store uh, can be part of the uh, Etsy reference architecture, uh, we can have a Lean NFE microservices-based architecture coexist harmoniously with traditional VNFs. There are many ways of doing so. One of them, for example, is to have the open source community uh, contribute translators that passively integrate existing VNFs into a KV store environment. Um, Another way would be to have VNF manufacturers build hooks into the EMSs and the VNF management systems that integrate again seamlessly uh, with an AKV-based uh, store. There are many ways here to address the you know, interoperability between existing install base and the new world that is Lean NFE focused. And uh, happy to address you know, specific questions um, after the presentation, but let me pass it again to Scott, who is going to give the summary of uh, the key objectives here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Constantine. So in my minus two minutes left, uh, I want to briefly summarize Lean NFE. Technically, the main technical points are simple. Use a key value store as the universal point of integration and remove the need for specialized VIMs. That's it. But more generally, Lean NFE is not a single code base. It is not just one instantiation. It is an open architecture, an open architecture that is designed to create a lean, extensible, and multi-vendor ecosystem for NFV. Now, we expect many realizations of this architecture, some of them purely commercial, some of them purely open source, and probably most will be a hybrid of the two. What are the advantages of this approach? Lean NFE is the minimal design that allows easy integration and leaves everything else open for innovation. So the fact that it solves integration means that we can solve the problems of today in a way that's complementary to our current code bases and VNFs. The fact that the rest is left open for innovation means that we can solve the problems of tomorrow, things like cloud native, 5G, and beyond that we are soon going to have to deal with. So for those of us who have taken the long and winding road of NFE, this is the path to increasing adoption and innovation. Now, in terms of next steps, we hope that you will learn the basics. We have a white paper up on our website. There are hard copies available. This is not just something that three of us believe in that gave this presentation. This white paper is signed by 10 people who are all industry veterans who know NFV inside and out. Some of them come from carriers. Some of them come from VNF vendors. Some of them come from other infrastructure providers. They all think this is our way forward. Visit our demo in booth 605. Longer term, explore, if you want to explore more deeply, read the forthcoming technical documents. We will be providing some demonstration code so you can see how this works in practice and attend future workshops where we can talk about both the technical issues and how we can move the ecosystem further. And on that note, what I, on behalf of my co-presenters, I would like to thank you for your attention and ask for your future support. <laughs>